The LAPD should be here any sec. Wait. Your wallet. You hang on to it for a minute. <laughs> I may have a little skip in a step too. What is for the do you guys with Cape the Former? We're back in the building for yet another movie reaction, guys. Today we're watching Catch Me If You Can from 2002. A movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hanks, and directed by Steven Spielberg. Why haven't I got to this movie sooner? Questions for later, but what I'm hoping is that this movie sticks to my sub theme for this month of Christmas movies that aren't actually Christmas movies. This is one of the movies that was suggested to fit that theme and plus it's loaded with talent so it was pretty much a shoe in for a pick. But enough squabbling, we're gonna get right into it but before we do guys hit the like and subscribe button for your boy. Definitely don't forget the Patreon, check that out if you want to suggest movies for yourself and vote on my many polls. And without further ado, let's do what it, let's do what it do. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Frank William Abagnale. Number two. My name is Frank William Abagnale. Number three. My name is Frank William Abagnale. By the time I was caught, I was considered the youngest and most daring con man in U.S. history. Number two, I find this all very fascinating. Who was it that finally caught you? His name was Carl Hanratty. Oh, 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 oh. You do not open the door. You do not pass him anything to the hole. Who oh, they got locked up in there? The Terminator? <coughs> you know, I got a little bit of a cold myself. That not sound good. Right. <clears throat> if the request for extradition includes several separate offenses, each of which is punishable under the laws of requesting body by deprivation of liberty. Frank. Uh oh. Frank, if you can hear me, don't worry. I'm going to take you home in the morning. Home in the morning, Frank. Oh. Home in the morning, Frank. Oh. If he dies, I'm holding you responsible. Oh. <laughs> He's out. <laughs> no He's way. Yeah, I really got finesse that easy. Oh. Well, he didn't get too far. A great dismount, not a great, uh, not a great finish. So please stand as I present my very good friend, the man who keeps our pencils sharp <laughs> and our pens in ink, Frank William Abagnale. Oh, so that's the real Frank Abagnale. And my son, Frank Jr. Frank. Oh, that's his son. Okay, that's starting to make a little bit more sense. Two little mice fell in a bucket of cream. Eventually, he turned that cream into butter and crawled out. Gentlemen, as of this moment, I am that second mouse. <laughs> they crammed two yeah, hundred. We songs. know the story, Daddy. <laughs> like... Holding their breath for you. Hear that? <laughs> and I turned to my buddies and I said, I will not leave France without her. And I didn't. <laughs> that wine is never gonna come out that damn rug. Darcy. Darcy, that's a pretty name. Oh, oh yeah. In a bit of a fix, I need a suit for my kid. This is my son Frank. Darcy, please come back. Darcy, is this yours? I just found it in the parking lot. Uh huh. It must have slipped right off your neck. Was that a bribe? If it was, I guess it worked. Four. You know why the Yankees always win, Frank? Because they have Mickey Mantle? No. It's because the other teams can't stop staring at those damn pinstripes. <laughs> Watch this. This is America right now. I'm not a criminal. I'm a Medal of Honor winner, a lifetime member of the New Rochelle Rotary Club. All I'm asking is for you to help me beat these guys. It's not a question of winning and losing. It's a question of risk. Dad, how could you just let him take our car like that? He didn't take anything. We took him. He overpaid by 500. <laughs> Come on, Frank. Let's return the suit. Can't scam them all, I guess. <laughs> I 
Damn, losing the house this too. This is good. Where's your mother? I don't know. She said something about going to look for a job. <laughs> yeah, right. She went back to France. <laughs> I put twenty-five dollars in the account so you can buy whatever you want. Don't tell your mother. I won't. Thanks. Yep. You're in that little club. I'm in that little club. Got that? You got it all. What kind of club? You got my name there, huh? To the moon. To the moon. <laughs> teach them how to sign checks. He should be teaching them how to do his taxes. <laughs> Don't make the same mistake as your dad. Oh, yeah? Uh, do you know what Room 17 French is? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> every bully in every movie has one stereotypical move. And that's the one. Oh, My name is no. Mr. Abignale. <laughs> That's Abignale, not Abignali. Not this kid thinks fast. <laughs> Excuse me, what's your name? Brad. Brad, why don't you get up here <laughs> in front of the class? Yeah, that's right. Pick his ass up. Conversation number five. Excuse me, why aren't you reading? Uh, QL's on. I'll Brad. never come back to, to Bellamy Jefferson again. You tell them not to call me. What do they think? It's easy for a woman my age and all the money that it costs to travel like that. Sad. Your son held a teacher parent conference yesterday and was planning a class field trip to a French bread factory in Trenton. <laughs> do you see the problem we have? Yeah, the guy's a genius. You learn from the best. <laughs> I knew it. He had to be proud of him. He had to. Mom, home. He knows exactly where he gets it from. Frankie, you remember Dad's friend? Chuck Barnes? Oh. He can buy looking for your father. Who in the hell? Thanks for the sandwich, Paula. I'll see you later, huh? Wait. Yeah. Yeah, the sandwich. Oh, I'll see you later, huh? And he shook his son's hand. Are you hungry, Frankie? I'll make Not anymore. Kind of kill that appetite. But you won't say anything because it's, it's just silly, isn't it? How could we sue anybody? She's jumping ship. What did I say? She's not going back to France, but she's hopping on somebody else's boat. That's tough. That's tough. Hey, hey, who the hell? You stay away from me. You hear me? Another dude? Stay away from me. I don't know who you are, but if you ever come back here again, Frank, hey. Frank, Frank, calm down, will you? I'm Dick Kesner. Do you understand what we're saying to you, Frank? Your father and I are getting a divorce. Ne t'inquiète pas, je suis là. Nothing's gonna change. We're still gonna see each other. Oh, stop it, please. Not Sit at the table. You put a name down. You can take as long as you want, but when you come back into this room, I want to see a name on that line. Frank, just write that a name. <laughs> this will all be over. One ticket to Grand Central, please. That'll be three dollars and fifty cents, sir. Is it okay if I write you a check? Five cents of that. And so it begins. Look, it's midnight, Mr. Mudrick. Where am I gonna go? You're a goddamn kid. Go home. Not an option anymore. I mean, I hope you understand. Wow. My boss sent me to Brooklyn, then Queens. Now he wants me in Long Island. Just that to easy. Take a few clients out for a night on the town. It used to be just that easy. Oh What's no this way! Right off your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Almost, man. <laughs> something I can help you with, son. No, let's talk back with Ashley. We're working some game. Yeah, you betcha. Can I have your autograph? You gonna be a pilot? Hmm? Wow. They're making there pilots look like rock stars. Dear Dad. Hmm? Maybe they were. I don't know. 
And, and what about those ID badges that I've uh, seen pilots wear? Well, every pilot has to have two things with him at all times. One is his airline personnel badge, looks just like this one here from Pan Am. The other one is their FAA license. The only way to get one of those is to become a real live pilot for Pan American Airways. Uh, I feel like I'll find another way. <laughs> How'd you feel if you uh, lost your uniform first week on the job? <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Yeah, Pan Am's got lots of uniforms. I'm gonna get it all back now, Daddy. I promise. I'm gonna get it all back. Uh -huh. Lane, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's a wow. pleasure to meet you, too. <laughs> they really are rock stars. Uh, I was also wondering if I could uh, write you a personal check. For airline personnel, we cash personal checks up to $100. Payroll checks, we cash up to $300. Did you say $300 for a payroll check? I really can't believe this is all working. Bro, I'm gonna lose it if he actually gets on the plane. <laughs> I can't believe how real that looks. I can't believe how easily he made it look so real. Yo. <laughs> this oh, is I'm insane. Sorry, sir. We won't have... you know, <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this. Which one's the jump seat again? <laughs> A nice flight. Are you my deadhead? <laughs> he is actually on a plane. I am now a co pilot earning $1,400 a month plus benefits. And the best part is, they tell me my family can fly for free. Marcy, did you drop this? <laughs> he loves this damn trick. <laughs> well, <Whoa>. no. <laughs> Yes. 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 The best date I've ever been on. <laughs> I bet. I bet. My man is going to use that necklace trick on every girl he sees now. Welcome to Miami Mutual Bank. How may I help you? My name is Frank Taylor. I'm a cool guy. the necklace. Pan Am. I'd like to I'd like to take you out for a steak dinner. <laughs> <laughs> My man has a newfound confidence. Our unknown subject is a paper hanger who started working on the East Coast. In the last few weeks, this unsub has developed a new form of check fraud, which I'm calling the float. What he's doing is he's opening checking accounts at various banks and then changing the Micker Inc. routing numbers at the bottom of those checks. Next slide, please. You know, you want to talk to my wife. She's the one who balances the checkbook at our house. <laughs> Next slide. The guys are acting as if this guy didn't just break down the most elaborate check fraud scheme in ever. Are you giving me a Cadillac? I'm giving you a Cadillac. Dad, she's she's parked downstairs. You know, if you never ever ever need anything. You worried about me? You think I can't buy my own car? Two mice fell in a bucket of cream, Frank. Which one am I? Don't worry. I'm not going to let it go without a fight. I'm fighting for us. I didn't speak a word of French. Six weeks later, she was my Damn, he's hurt. My son bought me That's a Cadillac sad. today. I think that calls for a toast. Con artists or not, man. You could tell he loved his family. Where you going, Frank? I had nobody staring at me. Someplace exotic? Just tell me where you're going. He doesn't even know yet. Well, I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'd love to hear a joke from you. Knock, knock. Who's there? Go fuck yourselves. So I'm guessing he doesn't like his partners. What are you saying? He's still here? 201. Oh, snap. Thank you. <laughs> he is oh, almost yeah. about to not tell him. <laughs> the firearm necessary? Right, FBI. 
No one said he was armed and dangerous. Hands on your head. No, oh, that's the new IBM Selectric. Put your hands on your head. Print type oh, in five no. seconds. Shut up! Out the ball. <laughs> Put your hands on your head. Put your hands. You know he's got over two hundred checks here. Hands of on your head. Draft. This guy is so fast. Hey, hey, look. Just do me a favor. Take a look outside. Look, look out the window. My partner's walking him to the car as we speak. Look. Wow. The guy almost pissed in his pants when I came through the door. <laughs> He jumped right through the window under the hood. He really of put this all together in his head, like just hey, now. Murph. Yeah. LAPD should be here any sec. Wait. Your wallet. You hang on to it for a minute. <laughs> I trust you. Bro, what is in that damn wallet? You just finesse a whole FBI agent. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, there's never anything in there. <laughs> hey! oh, God! Yeah, that's right. You feel like Bozo the Clown now. I may have a little skip in his step, too. Just to rub it in. Who's this guy, Wayman? Well, some nut just flying around the country posing as a Pan Am pilot. There's a column about him in the paper today. <laughs> Newspaper loves this clown. They call him the James Bond of the sky. <laughs> Did you say Bond? James Bond. Now what you need is one of those little foreign sports cars that he drives. Oh, don't tell him that. <laughs> don't tell him that. <laughs> Haven't I seen you before? Maybe. Isn't that your silver car I saw parked out front? Oh, yeah, you know it's his. One of them. Do you have a pen in your room? <laughs> I like the way she thinks. You know he's moving up in the world because he didn't even need the next. Oh. How much would you pay me for the entire night? So it's that kind of party. She saw the car. Don't be cheap. <laughs> 300? Go fish. $1,000. Okay, a thousand dollars. Bro, a thousand dollars. I can't tell who's the better con artist right now. <laughs> I've been trying to track you down now for the last couple of hours. What do you want? I wanted to apologize for what happened out my... I'll tell you what I am sure of. You're gonna get caught. One way or another. It's a mathematical fact. It's, it's like Vegas. The house always wins. You have no one else to call. <laughs> oh. Nah, no, come on, man. Don't let me get you out of your character. Good morning, ma'am. We're the FBI agents who called. Uh, yes, I've been waiting. I hope you're all hungry. I put out the Sara Lee. You're aware of the fact that he wrote some checks on a closed account at Chase Manhattan Bank? Oh, yes. The police think he's some type of criminal. What he did was a felony, Mrs. Barnes. Wait, I'm sure we can take care of that. I'm working part-time at the church now. Just tell me how much he owes and I'll pay you back. <laughs> so far, it's about $1.3 million. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a boo-boo mom can't fix. Wow. He really did take that James Bond thing to heart. That or Hugh Hefner. <laughs> Mr. Applebaum fractured his ankle. Dr. Ashland is treating him in exam room seven. You see that? <laughs> no, I mean it. I really think those braces look good on you. Thank you. Welcome. Don't pull out the necklace. Don't do it. Not to her. I'm a doctor. Oh my God. <laughs> That's even worse. Your dad. The only thing I need is a, an emergency room supervisor for my midnight to 8 a.m. shift. <laughs> I've been trying to show you all night. Wow. Good job. Yeah. So did it hurt when they took them off? Mine felt so weird after. Mm, I keep rubbing my tongue over them. I can't stop. Come on, man. Can't mm. kiss the nurse. He's 
in surgery. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Dr. Harris. Yes? Do you concur? <laughs> concur with what, sir? Oh my what god. Dr. Ashland just said, do you This do poor you kid. Why do not concur? <laughs> oh great. Squeamish doctor. I'm enlisted in the Marine Corps. He's over in Vietnam right now. That kid is halfway around the world, crawling through the damned jungle, fighting the communists. So every time his dad talks, you remember where he gets it off from. I would never give up my son. I would never give up my son. I had an abortion two years ago. Damn. I had an abortion and I wasn't their daughter anymore. <laughs> Please don't be mad at me, please. I ask permission to marry you. Oh my god. It just keeps getting worse. I'm pretty sure he won't be able to fake a marriage certificate. Well, <laughs> honestly, maybe he can, I don't know. <laughs> Two little mice fell into a bucket of cream. The first mouse quickly gave up and drowned, but the second mouse, he struggled so hard that he eventually churned that cream into butter. Practiced law for one year, then I decided, why not try my hand at pediatrics? <laughs> Tell me, Frank, what was the name of his little dog? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Um, the dog was dead. Nice one. Nice save. Because I think you're about to ask for my daughter's hand in marriage. And I have a right to know. Know what, sir? The truth. The truth is that... I'm not a doctor. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an airline pilot. I'm, I'm nothing, really. Even when he's telling the truth, it sounds like he's lying now. What would I have to do to take the bar here in New Orleans? <laughs> How did you cheat in the bar exam in Louisiana? Well, what's the difference? Someone else took the test fired in there. Carl, I'm going to prison for a long time. Seriously, what's the difference? Did we spell it right? You sure did. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Welcome aboard. Now, here is an enlargement of that same signature, which matches the signature on the letters that he wrote to Mrs. Simon, which discussed the possibility of defrauding the great state of Louisiana. There is no jury. It's just me. Okay, but he was still pretty convincing. What in the hell is wrong with you? Ironically, fake career or not, I think being a lawyer is like the best match for him. Uh-oh. He's missing having a family. Like a real family. Do you have a good lawyer? Well, I sort of <laughs> He is a good lawyer. <laughs> Look at this guy. The IRS wants more. It's easy to forget just how young he still is doing all this. Daddy, I'm getting married. <laughs> Can you believe that I'm getting married? You don't need to worry about anything. Can you believe you at all? <laughs> Call her, call her for me. You call her, you tell her I have two first class tickets to go see her son. Your mother's married now to my friend Jack Barnes. They have a house in Long Island. Come on, sit with me, have a drink. I'm your father. Then ask me to stop. Then ask me to stop. Where you going? Where you going tonight? Damn, Someplace man. exotic? Where you going tonight? Tahiti, Hawaii? All this con man stuff. All this. All this fronting to get all this fraud money. There's a big ploy to get his parents back together. All he wants is the family again. That's so sad. You want to run, be my guest. Your checks don't lie as well as you do. <laughs> stop chasing me. I can't stop. <laughs> it's my job. I love my job. All right. <clears throat> Let's get every newspaper we can. Every newspaper in Louisiana. Oh, I have to keep calling him, man. 
Is he just lonely? Damn, man. Got him again. Yeah. I mean, you'd love me whether I was sick or whether I was poor, or even if I had a different name. <laughs> Where'd you get all that money? Brenda, listen. A name, right? A name, it doesn't matter. My name is Frank Connors, right? That's who I am yeah. with you. But, but we, we all have secrets. You're not a loose friend? Brenda. <laughs> That's the one thing she cared about. <laughs> the International Terminal in Miami. All right? Say it. No matter what. No matter what. You're going to take a taxi cab. I'm take a taxi. You're going to be there at 10 a.m. I'll be there at 10 a.m. No matter what. In two days. Two days, Brenda. Frank William Abagnale Jr. That's going to be a mistake. Well, one of many. He really got to Miami. She really got to Miami. Oh. She's working with the feds, man. What'd I say? Oh, nah, hell nah. It's way too hot out here, man. Way too hot out here. Yes, this is uh, Frank Roberts. And I'm letting all the universities in the area know that Pan Am will be initiating a new recruiting program this year. I'll uh, be stopping by your campus tomorrow morning. Miggy Acker. That man got a spotlight. Deborah Jo McMillan. He knows how to put on a show. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> it's the pinstripe play. He's still doing the pinstripe play. <laughs> they can't notice him. I told you, man. I said at the beginning of the movie, the guy's a mad genius. He's waltzing right past the FBI. I'm just a driver. A man paid me $100 to wear this uniform, picks one up at the airport. <laughs> Who are you picking up? Pack up, let's. <laughs> Once again, man, too little, too late. And he's flying off. <laughs> we can still catch him. I'm sorry, Carl. If you couldn't catch him here, you're not going to catch him there. But, sir, <laughs> we're going to let him get away. True. No, Carl, you let him get away. <laughs> Facts. Germany, Great Britain, France. France! You can put these on yourself. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. You know why? Because I think you're full of shit. <laughs> I, don't I don't think there's anyone else out there. I think, I think it's just me and you. Damn, right. Frank. I think that sounds pretty official to me, but like I said, I, I think it's just me and you here. It's me and you, so you're going to have to catch me. Frank, no. Frank, you have Frank's to trust lost me it. On this. These people have been embarrassed, Frank. They're angry. What happened to a stewardess? Swear. Damn. The game's over, Frank. Oh. Uh, guess he wasn't lying. <laughs> Damn. The French police are treating him worse than the <laughs> FBI does. Uh, probably because he's a foreign criminal. That's LaGuardia right there. Runway 44. Frank, your father is dead. Oh, I'm sorry. no. Didn't want to say anything until he got closer to home. God damn it. Go home to be sick. Sorry. Go on, you gotta go to the. Pretty much did all of this for his dad. Well, it's for his dad and his mom. Oh, dude! <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> How the hell could he escape through here? You kidding me? 
<laughs> You're joking. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> My man is an escape artist. There's no way you could have convinced me he could escape through an airplane. Damn. <laughs> Say hi to your sister. And of course, they catch you again. I mean, this was an obvious choice of where you'd go. Sorry you have to meet your brother like this and sentence you to 12 years in Atlanta's maximum security prison and recommend strongly that you be kept in isolation for the entirety of that sentence. Damn. Damn. Isolation for 12 years? And what is he like? Not even 18? Barely 18? Merry Christmas, Frank. <laughs> They have the Christmas tradition now. What's in the briefcase? Oh. I'm on my way to the airport. Say again. It, it, it's definitely a teller, Carl. I mean, banks, they always use hand stamps for the dates, see? They get used over and over again, so you always get worn out. The numbers are always cracking. The sixes and the nines. I mean, he wouldn't know. It's a good reference to have. Using his powers for good, finally. That's a fake. How do you know you haven't looked at it? Well, there's no perforated edge, right? I mean, this, Sir, this check was hand he would not. Fed. Would you be interested in working with the FBI's financial crimes unit? Be placed in the custody of the FBI where you'd serve out the remainder of your sentence as an employee of the federal government. You know, he's just going to escape again. <laughs> End up right where he started. Hmm. A long time no see, guys. Hmm. <laughs> Give him a nice little sign on the door and everything. They're gonna get him real comfortable. Frank? Okay, any ideas, man? <laughs> you got to be joking. How'd you do it, Frank? <laughs> How'd you pass the bar in Louisiana? What are you doing here? I mean, at some point, he's gotta catch on. I'm gonna let you fly tonight, Frank. I'm not even gonna try to stop you. Because I know you'll be back on Monday. Look. Frank. Nobody's chasing you. I'm curious, too. Where can he go? Mind if I take a look? Cash and Flagstaff <laughs> a week ago. How was your flight? Cost the bank $16,000. I let this guy steals checks out of mailboxes. He washes off their names and he puts on his own. Already said it, man. His destined career was to be a lawyer. Fraud. Frank has also designed many of the secure checks that banks and Fortune 500 companies use every day. Frank and Carl remain close friends to this day. That is crazy. That is nuts. <laughs> Bro, all these movies based on like real people are like consistently blowing my mind. <laughs> but per usual, Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks did not disappoint at all. Um, they paired well excellently in this movie. I feel like this is the best cops and robbers cat and mouse game that I've ever seen executed in a movie before. The character of Frank Abagnale was fascinating to watch. Um, just this overall intelligence and cleverness and just quick wittedness just it kept you in a perpetual state of asking what's next. And apparently that was the same thought that Carl's character had. I mean, but it just goes to show, we like, we all love a sociopath, like <laughs> a lovable sociopath in a movie. And this is what Frank Abagnale gave to us. But as fun as he was to watch, he was a very tragic character in a way, uh, which I love the way they wrote that. Um, you really saw that exhibited when he was in scenes with Carl's character. Carl being the only friend or really a father figure that he had at some point. I love the music in this. Uh, the supporting cast was also great. It took me a while to recognize that was Amy Adams as that um, person playing Frank's fiance at some point. But she was also great. Looking back at some of Leonardo DiCaprio's earlier roles makes you realize 
um, just how qualified he's been for an Oscar for quite some time. But that ending was amazing. Um, it's even more amazing that it was an actual real story. It just makes you think just how much one man has influenced the whole United States banking system. I mean, I'm sure he influenced it to a high degree because there is no way you can get away with what he was doing today. <laughs> like, no way. And I'm still not convinced how he was able to hop on a plane as a fraud pilot that many times. Like, even after being arrested. It was nuts. But guys, thank you for joining me on my reaction to Cash Me If You Can. Another great Christmas movie. Leave me your thoughts on the movie in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and catch you in my next one. Peace!